Willard's Account of Knapp's Possession, a brief account of a strange and unusual providence of God befallen to Elizabeth Knapp of Groton by me, Samuel Willard. The poor and miserable object, about a fortnight before she was taken, we observed to carry herself in a strange and unwanted manner. Sometimes she would give sudden shrieks, and if we inquired a reason, would always put it off with some excuse, and then would burst forth into immoderate and extravagant laughter. In such wise as sometimes she fell onto the ground with it. I myself observed oftentimes a strange change in her countenance, but could not suspect the true reason, but conceived she might be ill, and therefore diverse times inquired how she did, and she always answered well, which made me wonder. But the tragedy began to unfold itself upon Monday, October 30th, 1671, after this manner, as I received by credible information, being that day myself gone from home. In the evening, a little before she went to bed, sitting by the fire, she cried out, Oh, my legs, and clapped her hand on them immediately. Oh, my breast, and removed her hands thither, and forthwith, Oh, I am strangled, and put her hands on her throat. Those that observed her could not see what to make of it, whether she was in earnest or dissembled, and in this manner they left her, excepting the person that lay with her, complaining of her breath being stopped. The next day she was in a strange frame, as was observed by divers, sometimes weeping, sometimes laughing, and many foolish and apish gestures. In the evening, going into the cellar, she shrieked suddenly, and being inquired of the cause, she answered that she saw two persons in the cellar, whereupon some went down with her to search, but found none. She also looking with them. At last she turned her head, and looking one way steadfastly, used the expression, What cheer, old man? Which they that were with her took for a fancy, and so ceased. Afterward, the same evening, the rest of the family being in bed, she was, as one lying in the room saw, and she herself also afterward related, suddenly thrown down into the midst of the floor with violence, and taken with a violent fit, whereupon the whole family was raised, and with much ado was she kept out of the fire from destroying herself, after which time she was followed with fits from thence till the Sabbath day, in which she was violent in bodily motions, leapings, strainings, and strange agitations, scarce to be held in bounds by the strength of three or four, violent also in roarings and screamings, representing a dark resemblance of hellish torments, and frequently using in these fits diverse words, sometimes crying out, money, money, sometimes sin and misery, with other words. On Wednesday, being in the time of intermission questioned about the case she was in with reference to the cause or occasion of it, she seemed to impeach one of the neighbors, a person, I doubt not, of sincere uprightness before God, as though either she or the devil in her likeness and habit, particularly her riding hood, had come down the chimney, stricken her that night she was first taken violently, which was the occasion of her being cast into the floor." whereupon those about her sent to request the person to come to her, who, coming unwittingly, was at the first assaulted by her strangely, for though her eyes were, as it were, sealed up, as they were always, or for the most part, in those fits, and so continue in them all to this day, she that knew her very touch from any other, though no voice were uttered, and discovered it evidently by her gestures, so powerful were Satan's suggestions in her, that afterward God was pleased to vindicate the case and justify the innocent, even to remove jealousies from the spirits of the party concerned and satisfaction of the bystanders. For after she had gone to prayer with her, she confessed that she believed Satan had deluded her and hath never since complained of any such apparition or disturbance from the person. These fits, continuing, though with intermission, diverse, when they had opportunity, pressed upon her to declare what might be the true and real occasion of these amazing fits. She used many tergiversations and excuses, pretending she would to this and that young person, who coming, she put it off to another, till at the last, on Thursday night, she break forth into a large confession in the presence of many, the substance whereof amounted to this much. 
that the devil had oftentimes appeared to her, presenting the treaty of a covenant and preferring largely to her, namely such things as suited her youthful fancy, money, silks, fine clothes, ease from labor, to show her the whole world, etc., that it had been then three years since his first appearance occasioned by her discontent, that at first his apparitions had been more rare but lately more frequent, that those few weeks that she had dwelt with us almost constant, that she seldom went out of one room into another, but he appeared to her, urging of her, and that he had presented her a book written with blood of covenants made by others with him, and told her such and such, of somewhere of we hope better things, had a name there, that he urged upon her constant temptations to murder her parents, her neighbors, our children, especially the youngest, tempting her to throw it into the fire, on the hearth, into the oven, and that once he put a bill hook into her hand to murder myself, persuading her I was asleep, but coming about it she met me on the stairs at which she was affrighted. The time I remember well and observed a strange frame in her countenance and saw she endeavored to hide something, but I knew not what, neither did I at all suspect any such matter, and that often he persuaded her to make away with herself, and once she was going to drown herself in the well, for looking into it she saw such sights as allured her, and was gotten within the curb and was by God's providence prevented." Many other like things she related, too tedious to recollect, but being pressed to declare whether she had not consented to a covenant with the devil, she with solemn assertions denied it. She asserted that she had never so much as consented to discourse with him, nor had ever but once before that night used the expression, What cheer, old man? And this argument she used that the providence of God had ordered it so, that all his apparitions had been frightful to her that this she acknowledged which seemed contradictory, namely, that when she came to our house, to school, before such time as she dwelt with us, she delayed her going home in the evening till it was dark, which we observed upon his persuasion to have his company home, and that she would not, when he appeared, but go to him. One evident testimony whereof we can say something to, namely, the night before the Thanksgiving, October 19th, she was with another maid that boarded in the house, where both of them saw the appearance of a man's head and shoulders, with a great white neck cloth, looking in at the window, at which they came up affrighted, both into the chamber where the rest of us were. They declaring the case, one of us went down to see who it might be, but she ran immediately out of the door before him, which she hath since confessed was the devil coming to her. She also acknowledged the reason of her former sudden shriekings was from a sudden apparition, and that the devil put these excuses into her mouth, and bid her so to say, and hurried her into those violent, but she saith feigned and forced laughters. She then also complained against herself of many sins, disobedience to parents, neglect of attendance upon ordinances, attempts to murder herself and others. But this particular of a covenant she utterly disclaimed, which relation seemed fair, especially in that it was attended with bitter tears, self-condemnations, good counsels given to all about her, especially the youth then present, and an earnest desire of prayers." She sent to Lancaster for Mr. Rowlandson, who came and prayed with her and gave her serious counsels, but she was still followed, all this notwithstanding, with these fits. And in this state, coming home on Friday, I found her, put, but could get nothing from her. Whenever I came in her presence, she fell into those fits. Concerning which fits I find this noteworthy. She knew and understood what was spoken to her, but could not answer nor use any other words but the aforementioned money, etc., as long as the fit continued. For when she came out of it, she could give a relation of all that had been spoken to her. She was demanded a reason why she used those words in her fits and signified that the devil presented with such things to tempt her and with sin and misery to terrify her. She also declared that she had seen the devils in their hellish shapes, and more devils than any one there ever saw men in the world. Many of these things I heard her declare on Saturday at night. On the Sabbath the physician came, who judged a main point 
of her distemper to be natural, arising from the foulness of her stomach and corruptness of her blood, occasioning fumes in her brain and strange fancies, whereupon, in order to further trial and administration, she was removed home, and the succeeding weeks she took physic and was not in such violence handled in her fits as before, but enjoyed an intermission and gave some hopes of recovery in which intermission she was altogether senseless as to our discovery of her state. Held under security and hardness of heart, professing she had no trouble upon her spirits, she cried Satan had left her. A solemn day was kept with her that it had then, as I apprehend, little efficacy upon her. She that day again expressed hopes that the devil had left her, but there was little ground to think so, because she remained under such extreme senselessness of her own estate, and thus she continued being exercised with some moderate fits, in which she used none of the former expressions, but sometimes fainted away, sometimes used some strugglings, that not with extremity, till the Wednesday following, which day was spent in prayer with her. When her fits something more increased, and her tongue was for many hours together drawn into a semicircle up to the roof of her mouth, and not to be removed, for some tried with the fingers to do it, from thence till the Sabbath seven nights following, she continued alike, only she added to former confessions of her twice consenting to travel with the devil in her company between Groton and Lancaster, who accompanied her in form of a black dog with eyes in his back sometimes stopping her horse, sometimes leaping up behind, and keeping her, when she came home with company, forty rod at least behind, leading her out of the way into a swamp, etc. But still no confidence would she own, but urged that the devil's quarrel with her was because she would not seal a covenant with him, and that this was the ground of her first being taken. Besides this, nothing observable, came from her only one morning she said god is a father the next morning god is my father which words it is to be feared were words of presumption put into her mouth by the adversary i suspecting the truth of her former story pressed whether she never verbally promised to covenant with him which she stoutly denied only acknowledged that she had had some thoughts uh, so to do, but on the forename November 26, she was again with violence and extremity seized by her fits in such wise that six persons could hardly hold her, but she leaped and skipped about the house, perforce roaring and yelling extremely in fetching deadly sighs, as if her heartstrings would have broken, and looking with a frightful aspect to the amazement and astonishment of all the beholders of which I was an eyewitness." The physician, being then again with her, consented that the distemper was diabolical, refused further to administer, advised to extraordinary fasting, whereupon some of God's ministers were sent for. She, meanwhile, continued extremely tormented night and day, till Tuesday about noon, having this added on Monday and Tuesday morning, that she barked like a dog and bleated like a calf, in which her organs were visibly made use of. Yea, as was carefully observed, on Monday night and Tuesday morning, whenever any came near the house, though they within heard nothing at all, that would she bark till they were come into the house. On Tuesday, about twelve of the clock, she came out of the fit, which had held her from Sabbath day about the same time, at least forty-eight hours, with little to no intermission, and then her speech was restored to her, and she expressed a great seeming sense of her state. Many bitter tears, sighing, sobbings, complainings she uttered, bewailing of many sins forementioned, begging prayers, and in the hour of prayer expressing much affection. I then pressed if there were anything behind in reference to the dealings between her and Satan, when she again professed that she had related all and declared that in those fits the devil had assaulted her many ways, that he came down the chimney and she essayed to escape him, but who was seized upon by him, that he sat upon her breast and used many arguments with her, and that he urged her at one time with persuasions and promises of ease and great matters, told her that she had done enough in what she had already confessed, she might henceforth serve him more securely. Anon told her her time was past and there was no hope unless she would serve him, and it was observed in the time of her extremity, once when a little moment's respite was granted her of speech, 
she advised us to make our peace with God and use our time better than she had done. The party advised her also to bethink herself of making her peace. She replied, it is too late for me. The next day was solemnized when we had the presence of Mr. Bulkley, Mr. Rowlinson, and Mr. Estabrook. With the coming, we found her return to a sottish and stupid kind of frame. Much was pressed upon her, but no affection at all discovered, though she was little or nothing exercised with any fits, and her speech also continued. Though a day or two after she was melancholy, and being inquired of a reason, she complained that she was grieved, that so much pains were taken with her, and did her no good, but this held her not long. And thus, though a day or two after she was melancholy, and being inquired of a reason, she complained that she was grieved, that so much pains were taken with her, and did her no good, but this held her not long. And thus she remained till Monday, when, to some neighbors there present, she related something more of the converse with the devil, namely that it had been five years or thereabouts since she first saw him, and declared methodically the sundry apparitions from time to time, till she was thus dreadfully assaulted, in which the principle was that after many assaults she had resolved to seal a covenant with Satan, thinking she had better do it than be thus followed by him, that once when she lived at Lancaster he presented himself and desired of her blood, and she would have done it, but wanted a knife. In the parley she was prevented by the providence of God interposing my father. A second time in the house he met her and presented her a knife, and as she was going about it my father stepped in again and prevented that when she sought and inquired for the knife it was not to be found, and that afterwards she sought sticking in the top of the barn and some other like passages. She again owned an observable passage which she also had confessed in her first declaration, but is not there inserted, namely, that the devil had often proffered her his service, but she accepted not, and once in, to bring her in chips for the fire. She refused, but when she came in she saw them lie by the fireside and was afraid, and this I remark, I sitting by the fire spake to her to lay them on, and she turned away in an unwanted manner. She then also declared against herself her unprofitable life she had led, and how justly God had thus permitted Satan to handle her, telling them they little knew what a sad case she was in. I after asked her concerning these passages, and she owned the truth of them, and declared that now she hoped the devil had left her. But being pressed whether there were not a covenant, she earnestly professed that by God's goodness she had been prevented from doing that, which she of herself had been ready enough to assent to, and she thanked God there was no such thing. The same day she was again taken with a new kind of unwanted fit, in which after she had been a while exercised with violence, she got her a stick and went up and down, thrusting and pushing here and there, and anon looking out at a window and cried out of a witch appearing in a strange manner in form of a dog downward with a woman's head and declared the person otherwise that she appeared in her whole likeness and described her shape and habit signified that she went up the chimney and went her way what impression we read in the clay of the chimney and similitude of a dog's paw by the operation of Satan and in the form of a dog's going in the same place she told of. I shall not conclude, though, something there was, as I myself saw in the chimney, in the same place where she declared the foot was set to go up. In this manner was she handled that night, and the two next days, using strange gestures, complaining by signs when she could not speak, explaining that she was sometimes in the chamber, sometimes in the chimney, and anon assaults her, sometimes scratching her breast, beating her sides, strangling her throat, and she did oftentimes seemed to our apprehension as if she would forthwith be strangled. She declared that if the party were apprehended, she should forthwith be well, but never till then. Whereupon her father went and procured the coming of the woman impeached by her, who came down to her on Thursday night, where, being desired to be present, I observed that she was violently handled and lamentably tormented by the adversary, and uttered unusual shrieks at the instant of the person's coming in, though her eyes were fast closed. But having experience of such former actings, we made nothing of it, but waited the issue. God, therefore, was sought to 
to signify something whereby the innocent might be acquitted or the guilty discovered. And he answered our prayers, for by two evident and clear mistakes she was cleared, and then all prejudices ceased, and she never more to this day hath impeached her of any apparition. In the forementioned allegation of the person, she also signified that sometimes the devil also, in the likeness of a little boy, appeared together with the person. Friday was a sad day for her, for she was surely handled with fits, which some perceiving pressed that there was something that behind not discovered by her. After a violent fit, holding her between two and three hours, did first to one and afterward to many acknowledge that she had given up her blood to the devil and made a covenant with him, whereupon I was sent for to her, and understanding how things had passed, I found that there was no room for privacy in another already made by her so public. I therefore examined her concerning the matter, and found her not so forward to confess as she had been to others, uh, that this much I gathered from her confession. That after she came to dwell with us, one day as she was alone in a lower room, all the rest of us being in the chamber, she looked out at the window and saw the devil in the habit of an old man coming over a great meadow lying near the house. And suspecting his design, she had thoughts to have gone away, that at length resolved to tarry it out and hear what he had to say to her. When he came, he demanded that of her some of her blood, which she forthwith consented to, and with the knife cut her finger. He caught the blood in his hand and then told her she must write her name in his book. She answered she could not write, but he told her he would direct her hand, and then took a little sharpened stick and dipped in the blood, and put it into her hand and guided it, and she wrote a name with his help. What was the matter she set her hand to, I could not learn from her, but thus much she confessed, that the term of time agreed upon with him was for seven years. One year she was to be faithful in his service, and then the other six he would serve her and make her a witch. She also related that the ground of contest between her and the devil, which was the occasion of this sad providence, was this, that after her covenant made, the devil showed her hell and the damned and told her if she were not faithful to him, she should go thither and be tormented there. She desired of him to show her heaven, but he told her that heaven was an ugly place and that none went thither but a company of base rogues whom he hated. But if she would obey him, it should be well with her. But afterwards she considered with herself that the term of her covenant was but short and would soon be at an end, and she doubted for all the devil's promises. She must at least come to the place he had shown her, and withal feared if she were a witch, she should be discovered and brought to a shameful end, which was many times a trouble on her spirits. This the devil, perceiving, urged upon her to give him more of her blood, and set her hand again to his book, which she refused to do, but partly uh, through promises, partly by threatenings, he brought her at last to a promise that she would some time do it, after which he left not incessantly to urge her to the performance of it. Once he met her on the stairs, and often elsewhere, pressing her with vehemence, but she still put it off till the first night she was taken when the devil came to her and told her he would not tarry any longer. She told him she would not do it. He answered she had done it already, and what further damage would it be to do it again? For she was his sure enough. She rejoined she had done it already, and if she were his sure enough, what need he to desire any more of her? Whereupon he struck her the first night, again more violently the second, as is above expressed. This is the sum of the relation I then had from her, which at that time seemed to be methodical. These things she uttered with great affection, overflowing of tears and seeming bitterness. I asked of the reason of her weeping and bitterness. She complained of her sins, and some in particular, profanation of the Sabbath, etc. But nothing of this sin of renouncing the government of God and giving herself up to the devil. I therefore, as God helped, applied it to her and asked her whether she desired not prayers with and for her. She assented with earnestness, and in prayer seemed to bewail the sin as God helped, then in the aggravation of it and afterward declared a desire to rely on the power and mercy of God in Christ. She then also declared that the devil had deceived her concerning those persons impeached by her, that, had, that he had in their likeness or resemblance tormented her, persuading her that it was they 
that they bore her a spleen, but he loved her and would free her from them, and pressed on her to endeavor to bring them forth to the censure of the law. In this case I left her, but not being satisfied in some things, I promised to visit her again the next day, which accordingly I did, but coming to her I found her, though her speech still remained, in a case sad enough. Her tears dried up and senses stupefied, and, as was observed, when I could get nothing from her, and therefore applied myself in counsel to her, she regarded it not, but fixed her eyes steadfastly upon a place, as she was wont when the devil presented himself to her, which was a grief to her parents, and brought me to a stand. In the condition I left her. The next day, uh, being the Sabbath, uh, whether upon any hint given her or any advantage Satan took by it upon her, she sent for me in haste at noon. Coming to her, she immediately with tears told me that she had belied the devil in saying she had given him of her blood, etc. Professed that the most of the apparitions she had spoken of were but fancies as images represented in a dream earnestly entreated me to believe her, called God to witness to her assertion. I told her I would willingly hope the best and believe what I had any good grounds to apprehend. If, therefore, she would tell a more methodical relation than the former, it would be well. But if otherwise, she must be content that everyone should censure according to the apprehension. She promised so to do and expressed a desire that all that would might hear her, that as they had heard so many lies and untruths, they might now hear the truth and engaged that in the evening she would do it. I then repaired to her, and divers more than went. She then declared this much, that the devil had sometimes appeared to her, that the occasion of it was her discontent, that her condition displeased her, her labor was burdensome to her. She was neither content to be at home nor abroad, and had oftentimes strong persuasions to practice in witchcraft had often wished the devil would come to her at such and such times, and resolved that if he would, she would give herself up to him soul and body. But though he had oft times appeared to her, at such times he had not discovered himself, and therefore she had been preserved from such a thing. I declared a suspicion of the truth of the relation and gave her some reasons, but by reason of the company did not say much, neither could anything further be gotten from her. But the next day I went to her and opened my mind to her alone and left it with her declared, among other things, that she had used preposterous courses, and therefore it was no marvel that she had been led into such contradictions and tendered her all the help I could, if she would make use of me and more privately relate any weighty and serious case of conscience to me. She promised me she would if she knew anything, but said that, then she knew nothing at all, but stood to the story she had told the foregoing evening. And indeed, what to make of these things I at present know not, but am waiting till God, if he see me, wind up the story and make a more clear discovery. It was not many days ere she was hurried again into violent fits after a different manner, being taken again speechless and using all endeavors to make away with herself and do mischief unto others, striking those that held her, spitting in their faces... And if at any time she had done any harm or frightened them, she would laugh immediately, which fits held her sometimes longer, but sometimes shorter. Few occasions she had of speech, but when she could speak, she complained of a hard heart, counseled some to beware of sin, for that had brought her to this, bewailed that so many prayers had been put up for her, and she still so hard-hearted, and no more good wrought up on her. But being asked whether she were willing to repent, shaked her head and said nothing. Thus she continued till the next Sabbath in the afternoon, on which day in the morning, being something better than at other times, she had but little company tarried with her in the afternoon when the devil began to make more full discovery of himself. It had been a question before whether she might properly be called a demoniac, a person possessed of the devil, but it was then put out of question. He began, as the persons with her testify, by drawing her tongue out of her mouth most frightfully to an extraordinary length and greatness and many amazing postures of her body, and then by speaking vocally in her, whereupon her father and another neighbor were called from the meeting, on whom, as soon as they came in, he railed, calling them rogues, charging them for folly, and going to hear a black rogue who told them nothing but a parcel of lies and deceived them, and many like expressions." 
After exercise I was called, but understood not the occasion till I came and heard the same voice, a grim, low, that audible voice it was. The first salutation I had was, Oh, you are a great rogue. Unquote. I was at the first something daunted and amazed in many reluctances I had upon my spirits, which brought me to a silence and amazement in my spirits, till at last God heard my groans and gave me both refreshment in Christ and courage. I then called for a light to see whether it might not appear a counterfeit, and observed not any of her organs to move. The voice was hollow, as if it issued out of a throat. He then again called me Great Black Rogue. I challenged him to make it appear, but all the answer was... You tell the people a company of lies. I reflected on myself and could not but magnify the goodness of God not to suffer Satan to bespatter the names of his people with those sins which he himself hath pardoned in the blood of Christ. I answered, quote, Satan, thou art a liar and a deceiver, and God will vindicate his own truth one day, unquote. He answered nothing directly but said, quote, I am not Satan. I am a pretty black boy. This is my pretty girl. I have been here a great while. Unquote. I sat still and answered nothing to these expressions, but when he directed himself to me again, quote, Oh, you black rogue, I do not love you. Unquote. I replied through God's grace, quote, I hate thee. Unquote. He rejoined, But you had better love me. Unquote. These manner of expressions filled some of the company there present with great consternation. Others put on boldness to speak to him, at which I was displeased and advised them to see their call clear. Fearing least by his policy and many apish expressions he used, he might insinuate himself and raise in them a fearlessness of spirit of him. I no sooner turned my back to go to the fire, but he called out again, quote, Where is that black rogue gone? Unquote. I, seeing little good to be done by discourse and questioning many things in my mind concerning it, I desired the company to join in prayer unto God. When we went about that duty and were kneeled down with a voice louder than before something, he cried out, quote, Hold your tongue, hold your tongue, get you gone, you black rogue. What are you going to do? You have nothing to do with me, unquote, etc., but through God's goodness was silenced, and she lay quiet during the time of prayer. But as soon as it was ended, began afresh, using the former expressions at which some ventured to speak to him, though I think imprudently. One told him God had him in chains. He replied, quote, For all my chains I can knock thee on the head when I please. Unquote. He said he would carry her away that night. Another answered, quote, But God is stronger than thou. Unquote. He pleasantly rejoined that, quote, "'Tis a lie. I am stronger than God." Unquote. At which blasphemy I again advised them to be wary of speaking, counseled them to get serious persons to watch with her, and left her, commending her to God. On Tuesday following, she confessed that the devil entered into her the second night after her first taking, that when she was going to bed he entered in, as she conceived at her mouth, and had been in her ever since, and professed that if there were ever a devil in the world, there was one in her, but in what manner he spake in her she could not tell. On Wednesday night she must forthwith be carried down to the bay in all haste. She should never be well till an assembly of ministers was met together to pray with and for her, and in particular Mr. Cobbett. Her friends advised with me about it. I signified to them that I apprehended Satan never made any good motion, but it was out of season, and that it was not a thing now feasible, the season being then extreme cold, and the snow deep, that if she had been taken in the woods with her fits, she must needs perish. On Friday in the evening she was taken again violently, and then the former voice, for the sound was heard in her again, not speaking, but imitating the crowing of a cock, accompanied with many other gestures, some violent, some ridiculous, which occasioned my going to her, whereby signs she signified that the devil threatened to carry her away that night. God was again then sought for her, and when in prayer that expression was used, that God had proved Satan a liar in preserving her once when he had threatened to carry her away that night, and was entreated so to do again. 
The same voice, which had ceased two days before, was again heard by the bystanders five times distinctly to cry out, Oh, you are a rogue! Unquote, and then ceased. But the whole time of prayer, sometimes by violence of fits, sometimes by noises she made, she drowned her own hearing from receiving our petition, and she afterward confessed. Since that time, she hath continued for the most part speechless, her fits coming upon her sometimes often, sometimes with greater intermission and with great varieties in the manner of them, sometimes by violence, sometimes by making her sick, but through God's goodness so abated in violence that now one person can as well rule her as formerly four or five. She is observed always to fall into her fits when any strangers go to visit her, and the more go, the more violent are her fits. As to the frame of her spirits, he hath been more averse lately to good counsel than heretofore, that sometimes she signifies a desire of the company of ministers. On Thursday last in the evening she came a season to her speech, and, as I received from them with her, again disowned a covenant with the devil, disowned that relation about the knife, forementioned, declared the occasion of her fits to be discontent, owned the temptations to murder, declared that though the devil had power of her body, she hoped he should not of her soul, that she had rather continue so speechless than have her speech, and make no better use of it than formerly she had, expressed that she was sometimes disposed to do mischief, and was, as if some had laid hold of her, to enforce her to it, and had double strength to her own, that she knew not whether the devil were in her or no, if he were, she knew not when or how he entered, that when she was taken speechless, she fared as if a string was tied about the roots. Of her tongue, and reached down into her vitals, and pulled her tongue down, and then most when she was strove to speak. On Friday in the evening, she was taken with a passion of weeping and sighing, which held her till late in the night. At length she sent for me, but then unreasonableness of the weather... My own bodily indisposedness prevented. I went the next morning, when she strove to speak something but could not, but was taken with her fits, which held her as long as I tarried, which was more than an hour, and I left her in them. And thus she continued speechless to this instant, January 15th, and followed with fits, concerning which state of hers I shall suspend my own judgment, and willingly leave it to the censure of those that are more learned, aged, and judicious." Only I shall leave my thoughts in respect of two or three questions which have arisen about her. 1. Whether her distemper be real or counterfeit, I shall say no more to that but this. The great strength appearing in them and great weakness after them will disclaim the contrary opinion. For though a person may counterfeit much, that such a strength is beyond the force of dissimulation. 2. Whether her distemper be natural or diabolical, I suppose the premises will strongly enough conclude the latter... Uh, that I will add these two further arguments. 1. The actings of convulsion, which these come nearest to, are, as persons acquainted with them observe, in many that the most essential parts of them quite contrary to these actings. 2. She hath no ways wasted in body or strength by all these fits, though so dreadful, but gathered flesh exceedingly, and hath her natural strength when her fits are off for the most part. 3. Whether the devil did really speak in her, to that point which some have made doubted of, this much I will say to countermand this apprehension. 1. The manner of expression I diligently observed and could not perceive any organ, any instrument of speech, which the philosopher make mention of, to have any motion at all, that her mouth was sometimes shut without opening sometimes open without shutting or moving, and then both I and others saw her tongue, as it used to be when she was in some fits when speechless, turned up circularly to the roof of her mouth. 2. The labial letters, diverse of which were used by her, namely BMP, which cannot be naturally expressed without motion of the lips, which must needs come within our ken, if observed, were uttered without any such motion. She had used only linguals, gutturals, etc. The matter might have been more suspicious. 3. 
The reviling terms then used were such as she never used before nor since. In all this time of her being thus taken, she hath been always observed to speak respectively concerning me. They were expressions which the devil, by her confession, aspersed me and others withal in the hour of temptation. Particularly, she had freely acknowledged that the devil was wont to appear to her in the house of God, and divert her mind, and charge her she should not give ear to what the black-coated rogue spake. 5. We observed when the voice spake, her throat was swelled formidably, as big at least as one's fist. These arguments I shall leave to the censure of the judicious. Whether she have covenanted with the devil or no, I think this is a case unanswerable. Her declarations have been so contradictory one to another that we know not what to make of them, and her condition in such as administers many doubts. Charity would hope the best, love would also fear the worst, but this much is clear, she is an object of pity, and I desire that all that hear of her would compassionate her forlorn state. She is, I question not, a subject of hope, and therefore all means ought to be used for her recovery. She is a monument of divine severity, and the Lord grant that all that see or hear may fear and tremble. Amen.